while they're getting organized. Um, so we can have a bit of a chat about what we're doing here. Um, so my message today is about, about messages. So, so usually you come up here and preach a sermon about a particular topic, but now I'm just going to sort of be preaching about preaching and, and about church. So it's, anyway, you'll catch on. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that we can come here uh, as your children in your house. We pray that you bless us that as we search the scriptures that you would guide us to a deeper understanding of you uh, and a discovery of our purpose. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. I want to ask you a question. Why, why are you here? Well, why do you come to church? What's, what's your thing? Um, everybody has a, a reason for being here. You know, it might be because of the baptism or because of, you know, you like blue pews or, or something. But there's, and there may be a few reasons. Um, what's your reason? Why do you come to church? Anyone? Why do you come to church? Why do you, why do you go? To worship. Good general rounded. Yep. To worship. Yep. To feel God's presence and be among God's people. people. Marvellous. Any other? To grow in faith. faith. Yep. Hear Hear God's message. So she's saying, get on with it? No. (laughs) No. Yeah. Any others? To be challenged in your faith. Care for what you wish for. But yeah. Um, I heard uh, during the week somebody said, My wife and I go along. I like the message, she likes the music. So they, they have a team approach to worship. We all have different, uh, different things we look for in worship. Um, and I'd just like to expand that out a bit for you. Everybody, I think, could do with uh, you know, learning a little bit from each other's purpose. <clears throat> See, I think, it's, I think it's true. I think all of the above, right? We come, we come to worship. We come to celebrate the resurrection. We come to hear more from God's word we come for application of that word into our lives Uh, we come for prayer Um, we come for uh, you know to pray for our own needs and the needs of the community oh my voice just expired Um, so there are various reasons that we come together I suppose what we can do is let's sum it up with um, you know, experiencing the life of Jesus, right? getting into the life of Jesus and the teachings of Jesus, um, hearing the story of salvation, right? you know, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you can be saved, you know, repent of your sin, you can be saved, that kind of thing. Also to be challenged in our faith and to grow in, there's your bit, you can, uh, to be challenged in your faith and to, to be led into a deeper understanding of your gifts uh, and how your gifts can speak into the life of the church. But also to answer the call of Christ who says go and make disciples of all nations. So if you can see the pattern there, there's a call to come. There's a call to learn, there's a call to grow, and there's a call to go. And I think that sums up what church is about. Now I don't know if you know this, but the church has a kind of a curriculum. Uh, Whatever church you go to in the world there'll be a kind of a curriculum. There are, there are some churches that, uh, very few, but there are, there are some churches that will kind of uh, see what each Sunday brings, you know, and, and um, 
you know, they wait for a bit of inspiration or whatever. But most churches in the world have a plan. It's called the lectionary. I don't know if anyone heard of a lectionary? Not a lecture, but a lectionary. It's, uh, it's, I mean, it's an ancient word for a list of readings. Like the, the readings that you're going to get. See, when you come to church, there'll always be readings. Joe did some readings this morning. And those readings follow a pattern that the entire church has gotten together and sorted out what readings they're going to be. And over, three, over a three-year period, you'll get a, uh, the plan is that you'll get a balance of the life of Jesus and Christian teaching over that time. Um, that's pretty nifty, isn't it? It can be good and it can be, can be bad. Uh, people can just rest on that and not listen to the leading of the Spirit. That would be a bad thing. That's, that's probably an abuse of it. But I guess what it does is that um, the most pedestrian of churches can get a good rounding of teachings throughout the year. Now what that does... And this is, uh, this is what I want to focus on this morning. Is, you know, when we're talking the, the new year, we're launching into a new year, and so we're saying, why are we here and what are we going to do? My plan, apart from hum, my plan is that if you're to come throughout the year, you will receive a good balanced um, teaching, a good balanced rounding out of the Christian teaching and Christian faith throughout the year. That you will get, that you will understand the calling of Christ and what it means to be saved, what you have to do to be saved and, and how to get there. How, to, how can I be sure that I'm going to get to heaven? Uh, how do I know that God loves me? You're going to get that. Right? But then you'll move on from that and you'll say, well, what does God want me to do with my life? What's my purpose in life? Why am I here on this earth? Why am I with this church? Why, am I, why are we together here? You, you'll get that. Then you'll get, what are my gifts? What's the Holy Spirit got to do with things? You know, how does he impact my life? Um, what can I expect from the Holy Spirit? And what does that result in my daily life. So you'll get that. And then you'll, you'll get a call into mission. <clears throat> you'll, you'll be called to, to share your faith with others and you'll be equipped and I will teach you how to do that. And so you'll, you'll be able to do that. That can be a little bit scary, can't it? That we're... What, you mean we're actually going to achieve something? We're actually going to, absolutely we're going to achieve something. Because the church is not here <coughs> to give Christians a happy place where they can come and receive the teachings of Christ. You, you hear that? The church is not here to share with one another the teachings of Christ. The church is here to change and save the world. Our, the goal of the church, according to Jesus, if he's anything to go by, according to Jesus, the purpose of the church is to change the world. The purpose of the, world, the church is to bring healing and hope to a lost and lonely world. The purpose of the church is to bring healing and salvation to all those who will, who will listen. That's the purpose of the church. That's what we're called to do. So let's do it. Wouldn't you like to see and, be, and experience and be involved in a church which changes the world? Sure, maybe just our little piece of the world. I'll be satisfied with Gatton, right? And maybe even branching out into the rest of the Lockyer Valley, but, but wouldn't it be exciting, wouldn't it be wonderful to be involved in a place that changes the world? That's what I want to do, and that's what I want to invite you into as well. <clears throat> uh, 
um, in our readings today. There are a couple of things. In the, in the epistle reading, Paul says to the was it Colossians or somebody? Anyway, what's that? Because of the the Pacifians? Yeah, something like that. Anyway, <clears throat> some old Greeks Paul was talking to. He said they had all wisdom. Right? Oh, I'll read the thing for you. All right, let's go back to it. Uh, I always thank my God for you because of his grace given you in Christ Jesus. Now I can tell you where it's from. It's from 1 Corinthians. All right. For in him you have been enriched in every way, with all kinds of speech and with all knowledge. There, and later, therefore, you do not lack any spiritual gift as you eagerly wait for our Lord Jesus Christ to be revealed. Okay, so they knew everything, that church. So, so no wonder they were so successful that they had been given all knowledge and all wisdom. So, so we've got to struggle along with just the bit that we know. That's not actually right. Right? Paul was saying to those people, you have all wisdom because you have been given the Holy Spirit. Right? Exactly the same is true of you. You have been given all wisdom and all knowledge because you have been given the Holy Spirit. And we've got a little bit more advantage over them because we have all of the Bible written and gathered and on my phone um, and easily accessible. So, so we've got more access than they had. But they had everything. See, when back in their time... Just because Paul said that they had all wisdom and all knowledge doesn't mean that they all did the right thing. Paul said you have all wisdom and all knowledge and this is how you're going to use it. You see, those people he said that to, in the very next breath, he was correcting them. The very next thing, he was telling them that they you know, shouldn't do this and shouldn't do that. Can you just please stop messing up so dramatically? He, like the Corinthians is about 16 chapters. This first chapter, he's saying, you've got everything you need to be successful as a Christian and a church. You've got everything that you need to get to know Christ and to be saved. And then he spent the next 16 chapters correcting them. And I don't think there was one thing that they'd done right in all of that. You may not feel that you have all wisdom and all knowledge. You may not feel equipped to change the world. You may not even feel equipped to change East Street, let alone Gatton. But you are. You are equipped. You have everything at your fingertips that you need to change the world. Because you know Jesus. What I want to do throughout the year is to lead you through just how, how we do that, what that looks like, what you can receive to be able to do that. I would like at the end of this year for you all to feel rather confident and equipped that you could bring about the change necessary in one person's life and that you could show them the way of salvation and that... that by this time next year, they would be sitting next to you in church. That's my goal. Right, so with this curriculum, let's get back on track here. With this curriculum that I'm talking about, um, this goal, that means a couple of things. That you're going to get the message of salvation, the equipping and the sending. That you're going to receive those things. That means if you miss a week, then you miss a week. Right? If you miss out, then you're going to miss something. If there's a gap in your receiving of what's coming out of here and what's coming from up here, you're going to miss something. There's going to be gaps 
in your understanding, the next week or two aren't going to make sense like they would if you had received every week. Now, I know this is difficult. Not everyone can be here every week, but we, can, we have every week available to you. You know, we, we got, you might have heard um, recording in progress. That's the, the Zoom voice, right? One of the advantages of the technology is that if you miss something, you can fill in the gaps. It's all there for you. Just go to our website and hit previous messages and, or previous services. So, but that's the thing. If you miss something, you'll miss something. You'll really miss something. Because we've got a plan, we've got a curriculum, we've got a goal. We want to change the world. We just don't want to make you feel good and, and you know, sing a few nice songs and sit around and sing hymns and wait until you die. We're not into that. We want to achieve something. We want to change the world. To do that, we need proper equipping. So if you miss something, you'll miss something. The other thing that means is if you bring something, uh, bring something, bring somebody, then they receive something. You see, if we're going to be going through step by step how to be saved, how to follow Jesus, how to reach then that's exactly what they're going to be hearing. When you bring somebody, they're going to be growing in knowing Jesus, growing in my gifts, reaching out. So that's my encouragement to you. Now we think, oh, Pastor, you're biting off more than you can chew. I don't know what I can do. There's an example right in the gospel reading as to, as to what we can do. Have you heard of the Apostle Andrew? Where are my glasses? Who's heard of Andrew? You've probably heard of Andrew. Two people. Oh, he isn't very famous, is he? Who's heard of Peter? Come on, everyone, you've all heard of Peter, the Apostle Peter, right? You've probably seen the movie. Right, so you heard of Peter, probably haven't heard so much about Andrew. You know what Andrew is famous for? <clears throat> and pretty much the only thing he's famous for is right here. <clears throat> Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of the two who heard that John had said, uh, who, who heard what John had said and who had followed Jesus. The first thing Andrew did was to find his brother Simon and tell him, we have found the Messiah, that is the Christ, and brought him to Jesus. <clears throat> and the rest, as they say, is history. Peter made a huge impact on the world. Peter was foundational in the, form, in the formation of the early Christian church. Peter was seen as the chief apostle. Um, a whole denomination, the Catholic Church, calls Peter the, the, um, the vicar of Christ on earth. In other words, he took Jesus' place. Well, he didn't actually because it's a bit hard to take that place. There's only one of those. But, uh, um, but Peter was just... You know, we, we all know that there was a tremendous impact on the whole world from Peter. It all started with Andrew saying, come and check this guy out. And then we don't hear about Andrew anymore. We don't need to. Andrew's, um, Andrew's contribution to the church, though small from our perspective was actually quite huge what can you do who knows but you can answer the call of christ and do what he calls you to do let's learn how to do that let's learn how to do it better let's be equipped to do that and let's change the world the peace of god which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in christ jesus now and always amen I'm going to do my own little bit of world changing now and I'm going to go over in a little gap over there off camera um, and anyone who would like prayer for anything, anything in your world that you need changing, please come and let me pray for you.